Hey guys, let's see, bringing you a, another video. Now, welcome to a Q&A video. Uh, there should be league footage on the screen right now. Like, there are several games that I've won recently that I'm not uploading because, like, they're either pretty boring or, you know, just not really worth it. So there'll probably be one of those games on the background at the moment. But this Q&A is going to be a little bit different to normal. We're not going to just kind of do rapid fire random questions. This is going to be a bit more streamlined, kind of like improving it improving at league but then beginning with one big conversation which is the champions queue that is happening in north america people have asked me what do i think of it do i think it's a good idea do i think it's a bad idea uh what is my opinion basically so i thought we'd start with that after that i'll probably get onto like how how would you actually kind of improve at league if that makes sense because i'm going through this process right now um you might notice i think hopefully uh, my general skill my general play is much better right now than it was even a couple months ago because I'm actively trying to play better. How am I doing that? I'll talk about that later. But anyway, the, the main one we're going to talk about, though, is the Champions Queue in League. So if you don't know what this is, just to explain it, basically, um, without trying to sound bad, and, you know, North Americans who are competitive will probably admit this themselves, North America has never been considered a very competitive server. Um, you know, their world's perform per per performances, they're okay. But whenever people have gone to their, their solo queue experience, they've always said the solo experience is relatively bad. Um, there are a couple reasons for this. One is player number. Um, you know, the North American player number, believe it or not, is relatively the same as the Europeans' second server, EU Northeast. So that's always going to hurt. Less players is less weirdly good players and that's where if you look at EU West, Korea or the Chinese servers that's where the quality is higher. Um, secondly and this is a very big issue too is the lag. So on North America you could be on your home server and it's very common that you're on 80 ping. You know it's your home you know you're not on like some random server you're not really supposed to be on you are in north america and you're playing on north america and you're on 80 plus ping some even probably watching you might be on over 100 if you're on the wrong coast or whatever that is really hard to practice on for competitive reasons for like if you're like say like me i'm playing on eu west i'm not even in the same country as as the servers being hosted i think the servers are either in germany or belgium or something like that i'm on 20 ping right and i'm not the pro that's living near the servers and that's kind of what's going on i'm just a random dude and i'm on 20 ping so that's already like considerably less than the average and north american equivalent of me um and then if you look into it like even um, Korea, you know, they could get down to such as like three or four MS when it comes to their response time for lag. It's a very much a, a worldly difference. And where does that translate into like competitive? If you're a North American player that plays on, let's just say as a better 60 ping, and then you suddenly go and you're good enough and you go pro and then you're suddenly on the world stage. Well, you've been used to 60 ping, you're playing on 60 ping. The game feels so different when you've got zero ping and when you're playing competitive on stage in worlds for example against other pros or whatever it's a zero ping atmosphere um, environment they don't play online they play local servers same as when they go in the studio they'll go in the studio and play you know team liquid versus clg or whatever zero ping they'll go home to practice even in scrims and they're lagging again like it's it's a much different experience so what they've done is it's a new thing, which, you know, it's interesting at least. They have developed Riot now. It's not like a random. It's a Riot-based thing. They have developed the Champions Queue. So what the Champions Queue is, it's an invite slash invitation only solo queue experience that is apt, like is the epitome of competitive solo queue. So you qualify automatically if you're a current professional League of Legends player. I think also if you're an Academy League of Legends player. And because if they only allowed that, they have had to open the floodgates a bit more than I even think they wanted. So ex-pros are also invited as long as they're still at like the challenger level. So that's where like Poe Belter and stuff like that, they're in the, 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 the champions um, solo queue experience. Um, and even solo queue players, I'm not sure if it's right now, but solo queue players eventually will be able to apply to get in. Um, and all for this, whoever wins, whoever is number one at the end, or I don't know if they're dividing up the prize pool, but Riot has put $400,000 as prize money for this Champions queue for the first year, which 
again, you're competing for $400,000 for a solo queue experience. That's mad. Now, there are a little bit of differences between normal solo queue and now this, not just the lag. Firstly, there is comms. There's, t t there's actual talky communication, um, which obviously solo queue doesn't have. There's always been an argument in the league community. Should it have it? Should it not? I'm in the, I'm in the park that I do not want comms in solo queue. If I wanted to play with comms, I would go play ranked fives. To me, that's the difference. But obviously this champions queue, you're competing for $400,000. It's a very competitive environment. Um, I don't think there's comms in the game, by the way, but basically because all the pros know each other, they're all on the same Discord server and they're just doing it that way. Uh, apparently, the way that it's working, uh, if you've watched any other games, it looks like custom games, but it's not. Apparently, it, they're on a separate Discord server that has a, a very smart bot or something that is coded to automatically put people in games. It's, it's all done through Discord, um, which is kind of crazy. And that's where, again, they can go on the voice comms through that official Discord server too. Um, so what are my thoughts about it? Well, there's part of me that thinks it's it's an interesting idea. Um, you know, it's a very competitive idea to try and make a solo queue experience more competitive. But that's the problem. It's not actually solo queue. So if North America, this is their attempt to try and bring up their competitive nature in solo queue... This ain't solo queue. It's just not. Like, it's not comparable even to EU West or Korea or whatever. It's it's not the same thing. It's a tailored experience for only a set amount of players. That's not solo queue. Um, also, solo queue is a lot of, like, where you develop your individual skill in the game. That's where, like, Faker and etc. the likes of, like, the really mechanically gifted players, they have developed their skill when it comes to mechanics through solo queue over years... Because they, you know, in solo queue, you've got to trust yourself. You're not on comms, you're by yourself, you've got to you've got to try and carry. But when you go in a team environment like pro play, it's less about the individual skill, it's more about the team play. And that's what this champions queue is for me. It's it's basically like a, a championship, weirdly, that's basically ranked flex queue permanently, but your prizing is individual. You're not winning uh, you know, four hundred thousand as a team, you're still getting seeded and you're still making money as an individual. But it's more of a ranked fives flex environment than it is ever going to be a solo queue environment. So that's where I'm, I'm slightly a little bit weird about it. If it was like literally a solo queue experience of like, right, you just queue up on this set server that only has so many people are allowed in. There's no comms. It is solo queue. Then I would have been like, OK, you know, that's that is actually a solo queue experience. That's where people will hone their skills, hone their individuality more. And that's where you could compare it potentially a bit to EU West or Korea or China, whatever. Other things as well is obviously there's eventually or is very soon going to be an application process. Who says who gets in? Who says who doesn't get in? You know, I will say I do partially think it sounds weird. I do think this is going to hurt North America more as a region than help it in the long run. Why? Basically, if you play EUS solo queue right now, that's the best example I can give because it's the server I'm on. You're a really good, talented, young person and you're making your way up to master, to grandmaster, to challenger and you've got aspirations to be a pro. One of the best ways to get scouted into being a League of Legends pro and it's still true to this day is you constantly are beating pros in solo queue. It always has been. There are, There's time and time again, these players that get scouted of, oh my God, that mid laner is beating X mid laner because, you know, in solo queue. That, this champion's queue completely and utterly destroys that happening. Now, obviously North America have had something for the last few years, like the, the, the scouting grounds or proving grounds. Obviously, I'm not sure how many of those people have ever made it into pro exactly. But I just don't, I'm not a massive fan that they are completely severing that like, oh, you know, you're not going to meet these pros anymore in solo queue. That's a bit of an iffy thing for me. Um, obviously, it goes without saying there was um, a little bit of an explosion on Twitter the other day, which I will say I have to be fully transparent. I did laugh about myself a bit. But basically, they've already said one tricks are not welcome. Um, and one tricks were going a little bit nuts on Twitter, being very angry about that. I don't, again, obviously people know I don't rate one tricks at all. I don't know why they'd be angry, because if you just like really calmly rational thought about it, you can't be a one trick on this level of competitive server. It's the equivalent of being a one trick in pro play. It doesn't work. Why? You just get banned out. Like, because of the way of the champion's queue server thing, 
you know who you're against, I'm pretty sure, going into the game. And if there's some one trick, I don't know, Tristana player, I, I, there's probably not, but like if there's just as an example, a like Tristana one trick on the enemy team, what are you going to do? Ban it. Like the end. That one trick who is only there skill wise based on that one champion, they've just got banned out. Well, then suddenly they don't belong in that server and they're never going to get that champion anyway. So that's why, again, it just. Yeah, one tricks obviously shouldn't be on the, the, the competitive server. Like, being a one trick is the opposite of being competitive. Like, that's the point. Uh, but anyway, I did find that funny. So overall, I think it's an interesting concept, but I do think it's going to hurt North America more than it's actually going to help. And obviously, that's probably the opposite of what they want to hear. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. It's going to be an interesting experiment. I don't know if it's easy, and I might ask Riot about it through the League Partner Program. Can I get spectated files of this server? Can we watch some of these games? I will try to find that out because it will be interesting. Um, and, you know, it goes without saying, not every pro might not every pro might not want this you know when it's solo queue time like it's what i've always said if i'm playing solo queue i'm kind of chilling by myself like obviously yes i'm streaming a lot of the time that's why i'm so against voice chat because i'm doing solo queue for solo i'm playing in my little bubble playing my solo queue game and if this champions queue took over and it says you know you've got to use voice communication etc maybe a lot of pros or a lot of players may not want that they may want their solo chill time so some pros, you know, it goes without saying, some pros may not even play on this Champions queue. Some may still play on solo queue, uh, the, the normal ladder. The only obviously negative to that is if you play on Champions queue, and I guess that's what's forcing it, there's a $400,000 prize pool. There's no prize pool for normal solo queue. So that may be why some pros, even if they may not want to always play on it, that's maybe why they will play on it, because there's a big prize at the end. But I don't know, like, let me know what you guys think about it. Maybe there's something I've missed. But overall, I just, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of it. I think it's very cool. I think it's very interesting. It's obviously a new concept. I just don't think it's going to do what they expect it's going to do. That's what I would say. Next up, uh, let's get into a little just random question. Um, nothing major, but basically, how have I gone from a few months ago where I would say it was notice I'm noticeably better at the game at the moment? Basically, and it, it goes without saying, enjoyment of the game uh, is a big one. I, and you know, I will still admit I'm having difficulty chilling out. Um, I will 100% admit that, you know, in my commentaries, how you sound really stressed or you're complaining or you're calling everybody bad? I 100% know and I've heard you in the comments and I have people on stream. Even my girlfriend is kind of going, hmm. I 100% get that. And that to me... What that is, at the moment, if I'm completely transparent, is I really want to get high rating again. Like, I've got the hunger back. The last two years, I will be completely transparent. I was just playing League. Like, complete. I was just playing solo queue randomly. I didn't have any hunger to be challenge uh, Master or above or even Diamond 1, really. I was just playing League. I don't want that anymore. I want to be high rating. I want to have that kind of, weirdly, that as a streamer, that respect that you get of oh, you're, you know, at least Diamond 1 on EU West or you're Master in EU West. Okay, snap. Damn, that's pretty good. I want that. I've got the hunger for that again. And because I've got that hunger for it again, I'm really caring about solo queue. And that's where I do need to calm down. You know, I'm not raging or anything, but I just need to calm it down when if it is a loss, accept it's a loss, move on. Don't be annoyed in the game. Just kind of accept it. Or, you know, if someone is having a bad game, try to carry them. I've done that. You know, we've had insane carry performances this year already. Just shut up and carry them. You know, that's what I've got to try and do. And I am working on it. So thank you very much for the feedback, if that has been you. But that is honestly a big thing of like how my gameplay has improved. One, the hunger is there. And the moment that the hunger is there, everything clicks. Everything gets better. Um, one big thing that I tried to do, and I, I think it has improved, it's noticeably better, is I knew my last hitting was a big weakness of my game. I have got better with last hitting. And, you know, there is still room for improvement, 100%, but it's something that I've worked on. And that's a big point as well. If you're actively wanting to climb in solo queue, do not think that you do not have a weakness. I have literally over the years spoken to even silver players and I'll go, so what do you think your weakness is? And they go, I don't have one. Do not be that player. You have a weakness. Every single player has a weakness. Challenger players have a weakness. Every single player has a biggest area. And, you know, there's a lot of players, including myself, there's multiple weaknesses. There's multiple things that you can improve on. But 
at the beginning, when you're wanting to improve straight away, just recognize and focus the biggest one you do. That could be like me, my last hitting, I'm missing thousands of gold per game because my last hitting is bad. So suddenly, if I just last hit better, then I get thousands of gold more than I used to. I'm stronger and more relevant in the game by just last hitting better. Or it could be you could die too much, or you don't ward enough, or you could you don't get quite a big one that some people do is weirdly they don't get kills in lane when they should be getting kills in lane if you're a renekton player and you're finding i leave lane with only one kill you're probably playing it wrong like you need to discover what your weakness is and that's not a bad thing it's admitting faults or mistakes with yourself is a strength not a weakness recognize that accept it and then you can work towards it and some people are like how do i work towards it literally the moment that you recognize what you want to work on and then you have it in your mind there's not much training involved if you want to get better last sitting focus on it and actively try to do it try to actually get better at last hitting don't just play the game on autopilot because that's what a lot of people do that's what i was doing the last couple of years and obviously it goes without you know i keep saying that word but it goes without saying the phrase but i kind of went on auto to autopilot because of the way of the world it was very hard for me and we've all been hit by it in very different ways it was very hard for me to like really try hard really get into it get the hunger when all this craziness is happening and you know i'm not saying that's a good thing i'm not saying that's a bad thing that's just the way that my mind and everything reacted to everything but i finally do have that hunger again and hopefully that has been notice uh, noticeable and um i will say again i don't want to like promise it because like if it doesn't happen then you know but i do feel that we're going to get master again this season like i do i do feel like i will be a master player and hopefully in not the too distant future i'm not wanting to give away where i currently am in solo queue because obviously this video is probably coming up before a couple other videos that you know i don't want to spoil but um i'm feeling it you know it, it, this isn't a spoiler but wherever i am in current rank i am right now on roughly a 60 percent win rate so i've not even leveled out my win rate hasn't leveled out we're still climbing really well so it does show it's night and day from last season on the Huzzy account to this season. If you remember last season, the Huzzy account started dreadfully. I quit the Huzzy account, like just straight up. And I think I quit it in Platinum 2. I didn't even think I got even in Platinum 1. We went obviously then on the King Pleb account and I peaked. I literally peaked, I think, in Low Diamond 2 on EU West last season on the King Pleb account. Obviously, the EU Northeast account, I peaked in Master Promo and never got Master. Unfortunately, the, the exact same time that I was in Master Promo is when I tested positive for COVID. And that really hurt. Um, so, yeah, we dropped quite a lot of rating because I was still forcing myself to play. Don't do that. Um, so, yeah, but, well, you know, I am feeling pretty confident. I will say that I'm I'm focusing more. One other thing I can mention um, some people, you know, I'll say I'm not blowing the, 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 the comments out of proportion. I've probably had about in so far this season, you know, we're, we're over a month into the season. I've probably had about five comments, which isn't too many of going play more champions, play more diverse champions. Oh God, another Anivia game, probably only about five, which is basically, you know, it's nothing. And I completely understand why, because I'm Huzzy. I'm the guy that plays everything, the diverse champion uploading League of Legends guy. Right. And now if you notice, I'm not doing that. Um, we're still playing a lot of champions. My, my champion pool is very large. I'm playing three roles actively. Mid is my main, and then I'm playing support and top kind of evenly. And I'm liking it right now. I'm liking the champions that I'm playing. And, you know, I even when I'm streaming, when there's like a clutch game, I'm even in my mind going, oh, I should play another Anivia game, but I'm stopping myself. Why? Because I don't want to get burnt out uh, with Anivia. Because if, let's say, when I get up to high diamond one, Maybe by then I might be burnt out by Anivia if I've played a lot of that champion. But Anivia right now is probably my best bet when I'm in Master Promo getting into Master. So I don't want to get burnt out with her. So that's where like it's been so good that Ari's made a comeback because she's now in my champion pool. One champion that I do regret that I've had a bad start with this season is Victor. I'm pretty good at Victor. I like Victor and he's probably the best arguably mage in the, in the game at the moment. Maybe Ari's actually overtaken that already. But anyway, Victor's one of the best. I played four games of Victor so far this season. I lost all four and I just don't want to play him again because I'm just like, I'm just going to lose. So maybe I do need to force myself to play a bit of Victor just to kind of get rid of that mindset on that particular champ because he's great. Like if you're a mid lane mage player at the moment, you should probably be playing Victor. But anyway, that is going to be it. So only a two question Q&A. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts. 
you know, on one, the Champions Super League thing that North America is doing, but also give me your thoughts on like, what do you do to actively improve in league? You know, share some advice from people in the comments and all that. Why not? But that is going to be it. If you guys enjoy, please do throw a like on the video, throw a comment, throw a subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Call down the reckoning to bring back hope and peace. Restore our glory to live forever. Bring down the dark regime. I know how to unleash eternal power. Lead us to